and today I'm going to be talking to you about terrorism, specifically the extremist group Boko Haram. So terrorism, what is it exactly? Some argue that it requires violence, while others just believe that they are simply fighting for change. The media has been going wild since the capture of more than 200 Nigerian girls who were kidnapped in their own school in 2014 by the Nigerian extremists of Boko Haram. So who are they and what do they want? Boko Haram is an Islamist extremist group based in northeastern Nigeria. Though the people have adapted their name as Boko Haram, meaning Western Education Forbidden, their official name is the Congregation of the People of Tradition for Proselytism and Jihad. Its first leader, Mohammed Yusuf, which began the group in 2002, was executed by Nigerian authorities, which created a bang that sparked the desire for more violent actions to be performed. This is considered a massacre to its people. The group's current leader, Abu Bakr Shekau, still implements these same values, but with a stronger and more violent jihad. Boko Haram's main attempts are to set all of Nigeria under extremist Sharia law, they want the complete eradication of Western education in the country, and death shall be the punishment for all of those who don't believe or are against their beliefs. They also want the fall of their current government. Their ideology can be defined as Wahhabism, Salafism, Islamic fundamentalism, meaning that it is ultimately religiously focused, but draws on deep ethnic and cultural roots to recruit members and sustain its momentum. They refuse to send their children to Western education since their beliefs strictly focus on religious devotion and believe that what education isn't and believe that education isn't a priority, but this is just the beginning. Katerina Perez, who's going to tell us about some of the most recent attacks by Boko Haram. You have probably heard of the incident in April 14, 2014, in which 276 teenage girls were kidnapped in their own school and were held hostage. 57 escaped the same day, and one was able to leave two years later but 218 still remain in captivity. This sparked a huge movement, Bring Back Our Girls, which has bombed the media with posters and hashtags. Though this abduction has become the most popular, just recently in February of this year, 86 children were burned alive in the village of Dalori in Nigeria. The screams derived from the firebomb huts and the suicide bombers in this assault were unbearable, and the people were left traumatized. In fact, the one survivor claimed that the attack lasted about four hours and many of his own family members were either killed or severely wounded. Boko Haram is best known for engaging in guerrilla warfare, recruiting members who are either emotionally or physically vulnerable. They mostly target government offices, United Nations groups, and civilians who don't share their beliefs. Though they are mostly focused on the conquering of northern Nigeria and Nigeria as a whole, countries like Chad, Niger, and Cameroon have all witnessed threats and assault. So who would ever choose to be in a group like this? Back to you, Naima. Thank you, Kat. While many of Boko Haram's fighters are recruited through conscription, meaning that villagers are forced to join en masse or risk being slaughtered, with ethnic loyalty strong in Nigeria, the majority of Boko Haram's fighters are Kanuri. The ethnic group of Boko Haram's primary leader, Aba Aba Abu Bakar Shekau, suggesting that he has influence over some traditional rulers in northeastern Nigeria. While it is unclear how many fighters Boko Haram has, UK-based finance and security and al analysis Tom Keatings puts the number at more than 9,000. Despite all of the damage this group has caused, it is almost impossible to believe that they don't even get half as much media coverage as other terrorist groups such as ISIS. Though attacks by Boko Haram are generally more deadly, with half as many attacks as ISIS, but around 600 more deaths in 2014. Military and media attention simply isn't interested in areas targeted outside the Western issues. Without international intervention, Boko Haram has no reason to stop their kidnappings and bring back our girls.